hi guys welcome back to another video as you can see from the title today i'm going to be sharing my college experience as an international student here in canada if you're new here my name is rochelle i'm an international student and newcomer to canada and on this and on this channel i share my experiences as a newcomer to canada as well as an international student so if this content sounds like something you'd be interested in hit that subscribe button turn on your post notifications like this video and leave a comment down below so i my application process so when i decided that yes i'm going to take the step and apply to go back to school in Canada I started to research I knew my budget I knew that I couldn't afford some of the more popular colleges the more expensive colleges like the ones in Toronto or Vancouver so I knew that I was going to have to go somewhere that was less popular so I actually searched and found two colleges that I actually applied to and I was waiting to hear back from them and one day I was watching a YouTube video and the video was talking about affordable colleges in Alberta because by this point I was really becoming interested in the province of Alberta in fact one of the colleges that I had applied to was located in Alberta so I clicked on this video talking about affordable colleges in Alberta and they mentioned Medicine Hat College so I said, okay, maybe this college is, you know, offering medical courses. And that's not something that I was looking for at the time. But when I did my research, I realized that it's the name of the place that is called Medicine Hut. Prior to this, I didn't know that there was a place called Medicine Hut. So I found out about the college on a Saturday, thought about it, prayed about it and made the decision that yes i'm going to apply i applied the sunday and on the monday i was able to have my document sent in and by the tuesday i got my letter of acceptance from medicine Hat college even before the other two colleges replied or gave me my letter of acceptance so i was very excited and you know i decided that I'm not going to give away sure for unsure. So I stuck with the decision or I stuck with attending Medicine Hat College since they were the first to reply to me. And what made this um, application process much smoother too is because I had already signed up for the Alberta, my Alberta ID portal. So once you're applying to a college in Alberta, you usually have to do this through a portal and once you sign up through that portal, you get a unique um, ID number and then you can choose which school in Alberta you want to apply to. So I had already done all of that because I applied to another school in Alberta and that made the process so much easier. The next thing is that my transcripts were already prepared. So I, at this point, I had already applied to two schools. I had gotten my transcript from my high school I had to request a transcript from UE and then I also had to request my transcripts from CXE Council. So if you're from the Caribbean, yes, you're going to need your CXE results. And these results have to be emailed directly from the school or the body, like the examination council body. You cannot submit it yourself. So you're going to have to pay that fee and have them sent to Medicine Hat College. But it's a fairly smooth process and I was able to get it done within the day. So in total, I believe I paid $75 Canadian for the application fee for Medicine Hat College. There was no cost to do the Alberta ID, Alberta School Portal ID. However, I did have to pay for my UA transcript about $1,000. And then I also had to pay for the Caribbean Examination Council to send over my results. So all of that was done within a day and by the following day I got my approval. So that's how this journey started, my school or my college journey started here in Canada. Now some of the challenges that I would say I faced was that 
I was going back to school at a different age and a different stage of my life. I have a degree, so I have been to college before, and the thought of going back to school again was somewhat unnerving, was somewhat overwhelming because when I was in college the first time, I was young, free, single, disengaged. I didn't have any responsibilities. And so now that I am, you know, now that I was contemplating going back to school, I am a wife, I'm a mom, you know, I had been in the working world. And so, you know, I was really not sure what to expect. Coupled with that, I would be going to school in a new country where I didn't have any family. I didn't know anyone where I was going. I just decided to take up myself and go <laughs> somewhere that I saw on YouTube. So it's a little crazy, you know, saying it out loud, but that's what I decided to do. And it worked out so far. This is my first time living through winter. I've visited places before during winter, but not Canada. Canadian winters are different from winters in other North American countries. <laughs> so I, to be honest, I was expecting so much snow. I was expecting it to be freezing cold and I never thought I would get used to the cold. But after a while I did. And fortunately where I live in Medicine Hat, you don't get buckets of snow or inches of snow like how you see in the movies or even other parts of Alberta, other parts of Canada. The winters here are usually very mild and I'm thankful for that as well. During the first couple of weeks after I landed, I was focused on getting settled. So, you know, you're basically uprooting your life from your home country, moving to Canada to start anew. So we were running around trying to get things like our health insurance, our social insurance number, finding somewhere to live permanently, um, getting a vehicle, uh, opening bank accounts, getting your phone, your, your phone um, activated, all of those little things that just had to be done, you know, to get yourself settled in this new country. Also worrying about where we were going to find employment, so, you know, those things were weighing heavy on my mind in the first couple of weeks after I got here. Moving on to the school system. So the school system in Canada is completely different. In Jamaica, where I'm from, I'm used to having one or two exams and that would determine your final grade. But in Canada, the school system is such that you have a number of assignments a number of projects, group projects, individual assignments, as well as multiple exams that will come together and give you your final grade. And this is good in case you have, you know, one bad test result. It doesn't carry down your grade as much because there are other assignments and other projects and exams that count towards your final grade. So just in case you unfortunately get a bad grade, it's not the end of the world. You, you have a chance to make it up, hopefully, and do better during the, the rest of the semester. With that being said, it is a lot of work. Guys, every week you have assignments in a number of these courses. So since i've started i've had five courses per semester and each course has as i said a number of assignments a number of projects but there always seems to be at least two or three mandatory courses that have weekly assignments as well as quizzes that count toward your final grade so it's like it just feels like you're under a never-ending amount of pressure there is always something new and you know i just was not used to that especially going back into the school world after being out of it for a number of years so i would say that the course load is a lot but i wouldn't say that it's difficult it's not easy either but it's just that there is so much to do there's so many things outstanding that it's a lot next thing i wanted to talk about is books so a number of courses or almost all the courses require 
that you have a textbook. Some of these textbooks are mandatory because your weekly assignments are going to be from that textbook or attached to buying that textbook. So let me break that down. So some of the courses that I did, you have an online portion or an online component where you would be doing weekly assignments on that online portal that would count towards your final grade. You need an access code to register on that online portal and you can only purchase, you can only access these assignments if you have a brand new access code. What they do is that sometimes they will sell the access code alone, but then you won't have access to the textbook. They have usually both physical copy and virtual copies of the textbooks that you need. And what some persons do to save money is that they'll buy the virtual copy with the access code versus buying the physical copy because the physical copy is always more expensive. Sometimes the difference between the virtual copy and the physical copy is not that much, but a lot of times it's significantly cheaper to just get the soft copy. The only downside with that is that when you buy the virtual copy, it's rented to you. So basically you lose access to it after you finish the course, which I mean, if you don't plan on going any further, in that subject line, then it doesn't really make a difference. You can buy it just for the sake of this course and then be done with it. So that's what a lot of persons did. I did that for some of my courses because I didn't need the virtual, I didn't need the hard copy, sorry. I just needed to be able to do my assignment so that I could get my grade. And I needed to save some money because that's the next thing. These textbooks are expensive. So remember, you're already paying tuition. You're paying a bunch of other fees, a health insurance to the school, um, recreation fees, all sorts of other fees in addition to tuition. But books are not included. So budget for buying textbooks. Now, not all courses will require textbooks or not all textbooks are mandatory for your courses. Um, some courses you're going to have to buy a brand new textbook, other courses you can buy a second hand copy or you can try to find them online. You can use free textbook websites where you can download them from or you can see if someone has it cheaper selling second hand than buying it from the bookstore. So the next thing I wanted to talk about is the program. So for those of you who didn't know, I am doing a diploma in business administration. It's a two year diploma with two semesters per year. So I've already completed three semesters and I have one semester. To Guys, I do not have a business background. I am a science girly. So that was another thing that was kind of um, intimidating for me. I had never done any business subjects in school, so I didn't do accounts, I didn't do economics. I was a science girly through and through. So that was a bit of a challenge thinking that, okay, you know, I really don't have any background in this. It's like I'm gonna be starting over from scratch, trying to learn things as I go. And guys, I had at least three accounts um, courses, two economics courses, and then I believe one or two courses that mixed both economics and accounts together. So that was stressful and that was challenging, but I made it through. The next thing I wanted to talk about is the teachers. So I'm from Jamaica where you address your superiors or your boss or persons who you have respect for. You address them by their last name. So you'd say Miss so-and-so, Mr. so-and-so. But in Canada, the culture is so different. You call your teachers by their first name. It doesn't matter how much older than you they are. You address them by their first name and it's totally fine. I found this weird, but it's the culture and eventually I adapted to it. One thing I must say about the teachers or the instructors at Medicine Hat College is that they're so approachable, they're very accommodating and they don't play favoritism. They really try to ensure that the students understand what's going on in the classes. One thing I must say is that the culture here is so different. 
I'm from the Caribbean where we're warm and we're friendly and we have manners. So I am used to walking into a room, seeing other people, acknowledging them, telling them good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Here, no one will answer you. You have classmates that you and them are in the same class all semester. You even do group work with them. And if you see them in the hallway at the school and say hello to them, they're not going to answer. If you see them outside of school and wave or say hello to them, they're not going to answer. So that's something that I found strange, but it's the culture here and so I adapted. I hope you guys found this video interesting as well as informative. This is my channel, Medicine Not Living, where I show persons my real life here as an international student and a newcomer to Canada. Hit that subscribe button, it really helps me out. It shows me you guys are interested in my content and that you guys are expecting me to produce more content. Guys, it's really such a motivation. When I see the comments and when you guys reach out to me, and let me know that you really benefited from my video or you found it very interesting or entertaining so don't hesitate to drop a comment i love to hear your feedback and i love to hear how you enjoyed my videos so like this video share it with a friend and if you're not already subscribed what are you waiting for join this community i'm so 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 happy that i am able to have this community here on YouTube.